Hey makers, today we're going to work on drawing different fruits and vegetables. Um, and to do this, we just need a couple of items. We're going to need a pencil and a Sharpie. And we're gonna want a couple of pieces of scratch paper. If you have lots of scratch paper, feel free to draw your fruits and vegetables real big as we go. And you can kind of um, draw them all over your paper and flip it over when you get to the end. In the video, you'll see that I've done all my samples on paper that's been folded into four sections. So to do that, I just fold in half like that. And then I fold in half again. And when I open that back up, I have four sections for four different types of fruits or veggies to put here. Again, if you wanna just do it all over a paper or in a sketchbook, that's okay. If you wanna do it in special sections like I did for easier reference, you can. Here are my finished doodles from the video. That's upside down, there we go. Finished doodles. Um, and you can see that I've just been kind of working on them this way. But I hope you enjoy, do your best, follow along on all the steps. And when you're all done, I would challenge you to find any other fruits and veggies that you like to try and draw. Uh, it's especially helpful if you have a picture to look at, like from a food cutout, from your kit, or from a magazine or a grocery ad, or if you have fruit or veggies at home that you can draw, give that a whirl. Anyway, here are all the steps. Follow this along and see you soon. Let's draw a watermelon. For a whole watermelon, you wanna make an oval that goes sideways. And since we're doing just black and white drawings, all we need to add now is some kind of squiggly lines. When we add color to this, these will stay white. I'm doing like a flat zigzag on top of another flat zigzag. And I'm gonna make those go all the way across. So like a bumpy line. Like so. For a sliced watermelon, we have some different shapes we can do. We could do, like I cut a whole slice right out of the middle of this. So you'll see that little bit of rind. And then you'll see a little bit of white and you can either draw the white in. I like to give that kind of a squiggle line if I draw the white in. You could also just skip this line and leave a white ring when you paint it pink. And then when we slice a watermelon, we often see the slices kind of going out almost like sunburst, the seeds I mean. Okay, and then from there, if you wanna make it 3D, you can pretty easily, you just pick which direction it's going. So this one's gonna go off to this side. I'm gonna get two lines that pair are parallel. So I see how I can run my fingers on them without them touching. They don't go like this or anything. They go straight out, just a little baby line. And then I'm gonna match this part of the curve. So in between the two lines, I'm gonna try and make a curve exactly like the other curve. Something like that. And when I paint this, if I want, I can put the little stripes on it. Like I cut out from there. That's gonna be the dark green and white stripes. If you want, you can also do half of that slice same way. So here's where I'm going to leave the rind. On this one, I'm not going to do that outline, but when I add color, I will leave a little white gap and then I'm going to put some seeds in it. And again, I can leave it just like this, or if I want to make it 3D, I can add my two lines. So there's the top. I'm going to add some detail there. So there's my rind couple of seeds showing and then on this one the curve will show I can't see exactly where the line is going but I know that it's off to the side so I'm gonna see just a little hint of that outside edge like that okay then a triangle slice 
could make a wide triangle, but it's like a pizza pie. So it's a triangle, but with a curved bottom. My rind and some seeds. You can do a lot of seeds, you can do a few. I'm gonna do a line for my white part. And then again, if I wanna make it 3D, I'm adding my two straight lines and then matching all the details. A few little seeds on that. And there's a basic drawing of watermelons four different ways. Let's draw grapes. Grapes are really fun to do and they're pretty quick. Um, I like to think first about what shape I want my cluster of grapes to be in. Is it gonna be a big cluster? Kind of like, you can see I have a cutout here, some grapes. Is it gonna be a big cluster like this or is it gonna be just a couple grapes off by itself? Um, you'll notice that grapes are oval shaped, but depending on which direction you're looking at them, sometimes when they're not fully grown, they're more of a circle shape. Or if you take an oval shape, but pointed at you, it'll be a circle shape from that point of view. So you'll notice that these are all kind of different shapes. The key to making a cluster of something like that is to draw everything as its own individual shape. So I might start with one oval and then add a circle for one that's looking more at me, but then they kind of will start to overlap and bump together. So. This one C is a circle shape, but since it's hiding just a little bit behind this one, I didn't make it a full circle. So here I could add one that's an oval. This one's tucked behind both of those. So are they touching a little or a lot? There's a little baby. Here comes another one. So again, I skipped a spot and went around want to be sure that everything is its own cool shape. Grapes follow kind of a triangle. So if we bring that picture back, you can see that where they hang on the branch, they're widest. So almost like a triangle shape. So I'm going to keep this as maybe my end. I might add one more little one. So I want to bring out a few more maybe on this side only. So some more kind of overlapping behind each other. And you can do all your shapes in pencil if you want and then trace with a Sharpie. There we go. All right, so there's my cluster of grapes and it's not perfect. Nothing in nature is gonna be a perfect triangle. So I like to give it one. There's always that one that's like hanging off the edge, right? Good. Now, anywhere you have gaps, you might also see little pieces of the vine. So I'm gonna stick that in a couple places. Maybe I've got this one, has one little baby hanging off. I'm gonna give one up here too. And then a grape vine, if you've ever looked at one, they're kind of knobbly. So it's a baby line, and then I'm gonna give it a little bump, and then it's a bend. So almost like a little knee, and then bend. And there's my grape cluster. If I wanted to, I could do something smaller. So like, you know, when you get just a couple hanging off and I'm gonna put my grape here. And they have like a little dent where the stick sticks in. So it was two lines and then a little smile at the bottom. But the smile is a little wider than the two lines were. And then I added my oval. If I can see where the, the vine is sticking into the grape itself. If I have one hanging down where I can't see that, then I would just have it kind of poking into my shape. And then I'm going to connect it and connect it. And then maybe over here I've got one where I already ate the grape. So there's my little bump in it and maybe another one. And then where I ate the grape, there's usually a little bump right at the top where it sticks into the grape. And then when you eat, pull the grape off, it gets this little kind of pointy part. So there's my missing grape. That one was really yummy and I ate it, right? You can also draw just single grapes. Again, an oval, a circle. And if you see the top where the stick was in, I like to make uh, 
an upside down rainbow, and then a smile that's a little bit bigger, and there's kind of my hole. When I color this in, I can add shading to this or I can add just color. And depending on what color it is, I'll be able to tell that that's a grape versus, say, some other round fruit like a uh, blueberry. Cherries are pretty quick and easy. They're a nice round fruit, but they have a little bit of a bump to them. So you can do something simple like that, almost like a bean. Or you can do where it kind of looks more like a peach. To turn that cherry into a peach, as a little bonus, I would just make it bigger. Do the same kind of thing, but a peach will sometimes have almost like a heart on the bottom. Like that with a stem, if you want it, and a leaf. That's a peach, that's a cherry. So very close. Cherries just don't have that little bump on the bottom. On a peach, you don't even have to give it that big of a bump. It can be more like a rounded, I like that a little better. A peach, if you're gonna color a peach, might have two tones, so you could even add in something like this to give it like a darker peachy, red color and then do the rest a lighter orangey peachy color. Back to our cherries though. So I've got the two cherries. If I'm gonna do a stem, I want the stem to just pretty much come straight out and they're long. If they're t attached together, then it would just come down to this next one, right? And then at the top, they get a little bump where they meet together. Cherries, you could have a cluster of two, maybe three. We don't see a m much more of that. It's not grapes, right? And you can see in this picture, sometimes cherries almost look like apples. So let's talk about that. I'm gonna add one off to the side by itself. That's gonna be more of the round. But I'm gonna add like a bowl, almost. And then I'm gonna add this little part. That's gonna be where my stem comes out. And again, I like to give my cherries like a little bump at the end where it's pulled off of the stem. That one I accidentally didn't leave a gap for my stem, so I'm just gonna fill it. Cherry stems can be green, but you can also make them like a brown or like a green fading into a brown. I like to give cherries a highlight because they're a shiny fruit. So they might get a highlight here and there. On this one, you might put it under the bowl. When I paint that or color it, I'll do everywhere red except for these little highlights. Um, and then my stems would be, like I said, either green or brown. Pineapples are a little bit more of a complicated fruit, but we're gonna make kind of a simple stylized version. So we're gonna start with an oval for our whole pineapple. And you can do this in a couple of ways. A lot of times you'll see pineapples where they have just little V's because of all their bumps. And the V's are almost like little scales. They go in between. So if I make a row of V's here, my next row of V is gonna be in between the middle of the ones right above it. So think about brick walls or dragon scales or fish scales. Pineapple's about the same all the way, right? And then they get these cool pointy leaves. So I'm gonna start at the top middle and I'm gonna go up a slightly curved line to a point and then I'm gonna come back down and then I'm gonna do one over here going the other direction up and down. So it makes a nice narrow, almost like a half of a banana. Then I'm gonna go in between those two to start my next one growing up in between. So instead of going like down the side where it would start to almost look like a mane, I'm gonna go up in between the first two leaves. So here we go. That's gonna go up and over and I'm going about the same direction as the last one. And then I keep going until I kind of run out of room. So there's my little pineapple frond. And if I wanted, I could add a couple babies, like the baby ones. There we go. Other ways that you could do a pineapple, if you're doing a whole pineapple, 
You can do things like an X for your scales. See how it's making almost a scale shape. And then I like to put like a little dot in the middle because they have a weird little, this part points out. This would be your actual part of the scale. And they point out at you so you can put like a dot to be that point. Same thing, my pineapple leaves are going up and out. So there's two different styles. And then for slices of pineapple or pineapple rings, I always used to have pineapple rings when I was a kid. So here's a, a flat oval with a little bit taken out like a donut. And then one side comes down and one side comes down. So two little baby legs. So now it looks like a fried egg table. And then I'm gonna match this bottom edge. And I give this line just a slight wiggle, all of these. And then it gets just lines that come out like a sun ray. And then on this outside edge, you would see lines that kind of go down it, and they're squiggly, like that. So right now it may not look like much of a pineapple, but once I get that all, there we go. So I went down right in the middle too. Now when, I, when it's got color on it, I think it will. You might also sometimes have diced pineapple chunks. So if I wanted to make a big chunk, I would make like a wedge but because it's cut out of this ring, if I cut a wedge out of it, it's gonna have a flat end. So not quite like a pizza slice, close. And then it'll have to my two sides that come down like two legs, and it's gonna get a third leg at this point. So one, two, three points of my pineapple have lines that come straight out in the same direction. And then I'm gonna connect them again, a little bit of a wiggly line and give it some wiggles and then down following my legs on the sides. Mm, actually, this one should go this way. There we go. So that is a pineapple dice, slice, and full. You could also do, um, if you're about to slice a pineapple, if you wanted to do a combination where you have a whole pineapple and you just slice the top off of it, you would make the bottom half of your oval and then we're going to do this part just right on top of this part of a pineapple so I'm going to add this ring over here and draw it so this part then I'm going to add the hole which wouldn't actually be a hole but you can still kind of see that circle this whole part, when you have an actual pineapple, you have to, cor it's called coring it, just like you do an apple. You have to take that middle piece out. So we're not gonna see this in the middle anymore. It's just gonna be a solid circle, but I do still want it, those rings. Okay, something like that. And then I can give it my V's or X's or whichever design I had chosen for a large pineapple. So there's the bottom slice of the pineapple. If I want the top on the table next to it, I could do the same. So I'm gonna draw this ring again, but matching this one. And then the top of my oval, and then maybe my greens. And since that's upside down, my V's are actually gonna be sideways here like that. And ring. So now I have the top half of a pineapple, the bottom half of a pineapple, a slice, a chunk, and two ways to do our whole pineapple. Let's do some tomatoes. All right, so here's a tomato. 
They're usually, well, there's lots of different kinds of tomatoes. So most are a round shape. Some are a little bit more oval. Those are called Romas, for example, and those are, those are one of my favorite tomatoes. Um, but these are like a little cherry tomato. So they're a circular shape um, that we're gonna start with. And I'll show you how to do some on the vine like this, and then some off the vine, and then some slices. All right. In a lot of ways, a lot of fruits look kind of like each other. So for now, this is gonna look a little bit like cherries or grapes. You can get grape tomatoes. All right, so I've got a circle -y shape and a stem coming out, but you can see I didn't connect my circle shape because a tomato has like a star, almost like a star of greens. You can see here, this one really looks like a star. Um, so it's got about five pieces and they may curl down, but usually then they, they kind of come down onto the tomato and up. So they're gonna be different lengths. You can see this one is what I'm gonna do something like. So here I'm gonna make a little point almost in front of my stem. And then I'm gonna make a curved one and one more and one back here and one back here. So if I paint this or color this, those little parts and the stem will be green. My tomato itself will be like a red or a red orange or even a yellow or a yellowy green, depending on how ripe your tomato is. You can see that this has a red orange, orange, yellow, and a yellow green. All right, and when they connect, they kind of come and then the stem comes down like an upside down Y. And then it's gonna keep going, but the Y is gonna break off on the other side, like that. So there's a main stem with a stem coming off on one side, and then on the other side. Over here, we'll do one with an actual star. The cool thing about a tomato is that it's a natural thing, which means it's not perfect. So if you draw a star, all you need is five points that are long and skinny. If it ends up wonky looking, that's okay, it's a natural thing. You can see that all of these stars, if I were to trace just the star part, are pretty silly shaped. All right, so there's my stem coming down, and then I'm just gonna have my tomato. Ooh, that one got a little wide, so we'll go like that. Okay, so that one's bigger. Mm, and they usually wouldn't go out quite that far, so maybe we'll bend this down so that my next one I can try to get a little closer. Mm. Again, I'm gonna start with my star parts. This one I'm gonna make them come up like little pieces. So there's one, two, three, four, five star parts. And my little tomato. <laughs> that one's a little more like a strawberry. There we go. All right. Tomatoes have shiny spots, so you can draw in a highlight if you want, or you can leave a little part when you color or draw it a little lighter. All right, slicing tomatoes. Think about like on a sand for a sandwich. So you have this as the outer ring, and then inside a tomato, if you slice it across, you're gonna get. Um, almost like a citrus. So there'll be like gooey stuff and seeds in the middle. And then it's got kind of a like triangle like a piece of pie. But because of the goo in the middle, I'm not gonna actually draw the point. So I'm drawing almost more like flower petals. There's my little tomato slice. If I wanna make it 3D, I'm gonna give it two lines that go straight in the same direction, just really short lines. And then I'm gonna follow the curve just in between those two lines. So this part right here, following the curve. Tomato. Tomatoes are really juicy, at least good ones are. So you can give it a little juice if you need to. But I'm gonna leave mine just like that. A tomato wedge is similar almost to a citrus wedge, so a curve. And then I'm gonna do kind of like that. And then kind of the same thing. I'm gonna give this kind of a really wobbly line because they're not very firm. 
There's all my like seeds and goo. So right now it looks a little like an apple slice. And then I'm gonna add those petally parts again. And if I paint that the right color, it will be tomato, not lemon, right? All right, and to make it wedge-like, you could give it an extra, almost like a crescent moon shape over here. All right, so full tomatoes, and these can be, depending on how big you draw them, that could be something called a beefsteak tomato. Those are the really big ones that they take a whole slice of to put on a cheeseburger. Or they could be little cherry or grape tomatoes, especially if you cluster them together like this, almost like grapes. You could do a tomato slice for a salad or uh, on a pizza or just plain like that or a wedge. Um, wedges are nice for things like salads and things like that. All right, we're gonna make some beans, peas, and asparagus. Pea pods and bean pods are really similar to each other. Think about a smile shape. So they kind of come and bump, and then they come down a little bit, and then they get a little bit bigger. So this is gonna be a pea pod. If it's a pea pod that's closed, you might mimic this top line like that, and then give it just like a curve and a curve for the peas inside. So circle that doesn't quite connect. If it's a bean, it's gonna be really long and narrow. So it has that end again, and this time it's gonna come out, and then they get kind of a point like that, and then just really long and narrow. So think like a green bean fresh off the vine. If, and they grow in little clusters, so I could do kind of another one peeking out, like that, and then maybe I've got one more, kind of peeking out underneath. Right, so there's some beans. If I wanna do green beans that have been cut, they will have a little line on them, and around, and around, and around, and you can see kind of the beans sticking out. If I color that green, or yellow, or white, you'd know that it's a little green bean plot. For a pea pod where the peas are sticking out, you do the same as the main shape. But instead of doing it really close to the edge this time, I'm gonna first make peas poking out. Almost got a little big for me, there we go. And then I'm gonna kind of show that it's open, like a boat. So I did just short lines as if there was this line, but up and these are in the way, right? Okay, a pea by itself is just a little circle. And if you do a pile of them, you're gonna have which ones are in front and which ones are behind. Something like this. Just a little pile of peas. Um, and asparagus. Asparagus is a long and straight kind of vegetable. But it has these cool tops. That's my favorite part. So they come up kind of like a teardrop shape. So right now it almost looks like a match or a candle. But the teardrop shape itself has little points inside. So I'm doing little upward triangles, like little mountains in there. You can also give the stalk itself a couple of mountains because they're not perfectly smooth. I don't know about you guys, but I really love asparagus, especially this top part. That comes in a bundle so you can add another part of one. Now that I've drawn one, I can make my first stick bumpy. And there's a bumpy top. And I can make them like a bundle, almost like firewood. Sometimes they'll curve the other way. Right. 
asparagus. Pumpkins, squash, and gourds. Let's do a pumpkin first. I like to start with, there's like lots of ways to draw pumpkins, but my favorite way is to do like a, a tall, kind of almost like a stretched out egg shape, oval-ish, and then I give it one on the side, and one on the side, and every time I add one, I'm going up, down, and back in, like that, and then I give it a stem. Stem I might add lines to. You can also keep it a little more round, like a pie pumpkin is pretty round, so I'm doing more of a circle, and then giving it lines down. You'll notice that on the right side, my lines curve to the right. If it's left of the middle, my lines curve to the left. And then I give that a stem. So I have a big, like, big pumpkin or a little pumpkin. A gourd is a almost circle. And then it has this long part that kind of curves up. There was a show on TV when I was a kid called The Snorks, and they used to have heads kind of like that. Sometimes gourds will have the lines on this part. You can even add some here, like that. And you can also find some gourds. There's some cool ones that people turn into birdhouses, and they're almost like a bowling pin or a stretched out avocado shape. are a favorite of mine. Carrots are like a long stretched out triangle, so I give a curved top, almost like a rainbow, and then I just kind of come down and slightly wiggly. If they're fresh out of the ground, they have little hairs here at the bottom that you kind of trim off, and they have a tall leafy green, so if you're adding with little baby flowers, so I do a tall line and little boop, 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 or you can add little shapies here, almost like little seed shapes. And there'd be lots of that. Carrots also have, nat um, natural carrots will have lines that kind of come. See how I'm curving my line down just a little bit? Especially when they come right out of the ground, you can see all of that in the dirt. If I wanna do maybe a carrot stick, I'm gonna think of a boat shape and then there's a flat carrot stick and then I'm going to give two lines back and flatten. So see how this flat line and this flat line match and then again because it's not perfectly smooth I'm going to give it just a little bit of a bump and you see two lines down the middle. And when I color that orange, carrot stick. Let's do um, a carrot slice. So carrot slice would be a circle, and they have a couple rings. Again, this will be all orange, so it has a ring and usually another ring. Or carrots will actually come in all different colors. My favorite color of carrot is either white carrots or purple carrots. Have you ever tried a purple carrot? They're really good. Two straight lines out, and matching the curve in between. So there's like a carrot slice. Like So you could do some carrot slices. You could do one more sideways like that. So see how I squished an oval, flat oval with a little ring. And then if I wanted, I could add some little peas. So I had a little serving of peas and carrots because they go together so well. Color is important in food images, but I think that'll give you a good idea. Let's make an apple and a pear. For an apple, I like to go like a little tiny dip, and then I come up and around, and up and around, and you can do two different ways. You can make it come back out before you go back in, like this, or I could go, some apples are just a little more flat on the bottom, like that. If this is a whole apple uncut, I might give it 
a shiny spot, a stem, something like that. If it's a sliced apple, I could give it just the really tiniest outline inside where I could color this little space red or green depending on what kind of apple it is. And then I like to give it all the two little curves and a seed or two. You can skip the curves and just do a couple seeds if you want. And then again, I could give it part of the stem or I could leave the stem off. Apple slices are pretty simple. They just look like this, straight line. The curve to match the curve of the apple. So if it's a rounder apple like this, it would be just like this. If it's one that's got that curve, I'm gonna draw that curve. And then do my straight line. And give it that little edge. Maybe there's a seed. This one is not a seed, but it's gonna have kind of that curve right there. Some apple slices. A pear is a different shape. So I'm gonna give it a tall rainbow and a little curve in like a dent. And then I'm gonna give it a bigger bottom. If it's a full pear, I'd give it a stem. You can make stems end at the top of a fruit, or you can make them kind of come in. When I make them come into my fruit, whether it's an apple or a pear or a cherry or a tomato, I'm gonna give it like a little curve to show that it's sticking in. If that was a pear slice, it'd be this same, like a halved pear, be a similar shape. And then you'd see those seeds inside and this outside edge would be my greenish or yellowish color. A pear slice would look a lot like this particular apple slice. So on an apple slice, this is the top of my apple. So if there was stem, it would be over here. On a pear slice, this would be the top over here. And then if there was a stem poking out, it'd be on this side. So if I look at that, it's a pear slice or an apple slice. And it depends on, again, what color you show that rind. Let's talk about berries. What is your favorite berry? Mine are raspberries. So let's start there. Now a raspberry is a little bit complicated just because it has a hole in the top and it's hollow. Do you like to stick them on the tips of your fingers before you eat them? I do. So we're gonna make a hollow spot like that and um, like that. And then I'm going to do a bumpy ridge at the bottom of that and a flatter but still bumpy one at the top. This is the inside of my berry. So you could color that black or you could, when you um, paint it, it could be a darker color. And then a berry is kind of shaped, raspberry is kind of shaped like this, but it's bumpy, so I'm gonna just do little bumpies to make it that shape. If you don't wanna draw every single bump on your berry, you could also do something like this. And just do that outside shape. That will tell me when I look at it that it's a berry. And this one is really complicated, really, really simple. Sometimes on these, I like to give them just a couple bumps inside to show that it's bumpy everywhere. And then again, when I paint it, if I paint it a raspberry color, like this pretty reddish pink, you'll be able to know, oh, that's a raspberry. Blackberries are more like this, but they're even bigger. So I'd give it just a couple extra rows at the bottom and they grow a tiny bit pointier than a raspberry. So a raspberry is gonna be more like this shape. A blackberry is more like that shape. So like a taller shape here. You can see this one here. All right, so blackberry, raspberry. Blueberries are easy. They're just a circle, but they have um, like a little hole at the top. So you can just do it like that. Or sometimes they have almost like a little baby crown. So if I do that, 
sides, two sides of my crown, and then bring my circle around, and then give that a couple of bumps. I can do something like that, so there's the bottom. Or I could do just like this. All right, so there's some different styles of blueberries. And then probably the most popular is the strawberry. So strawberry is almost um, a heart shape, similar to a heart. Down, it's not pointy, right? So it's wide at the top, pointed at the bottom. So if I drew that with only straight lines, it might be triangle-ish, but I'm doing really curvy lines to make it a strawberry. If you're doing the top, it has it reminds me of Kermit the Frog, but it's like a pointy, spiky leaves that are at the top, and then they have the little seeds everywhere. The seeds on a strawberry can be darker than the strawberry, um, like a, a yellowish, greenish brown, or um, on a younger strawberry, they could be just white. There we go. They grow on a vine or on a little plant, so you could have a little top. If you're doing a sliced strawberry, it's going to be that same almost heart shape. And then the inside has like a line. Maybe I can see some of that there. So, like a line. There's my strawberry side. Something like that. Okay. Citrus fruits. So a citrus fruit would be an orange, a lime, a lemon, and a grapefruit. We're gonna talk about oranges and grapefruit first because they're both round. So round with a little thing on one end. Ta-da, it's a simple orange. If it's sliced, it's going to have kind of a middle, like cut in half. And then you'll have like pie pieces going all the way around. Notice I'm not taking them all the way out to the edge and you can actually draw this part in. So you would see first a ring of whatever color it is. So if it's an orange, it's going to be like a bright orange. If it's a grapefruit, it's going to be a yellowy orange. And then what I put inside is gonna tell me also what kind of citrus it is. And this works also for lemons and limes if you have them sliced completely in half. So an orange is gonna be orange and orange. A grapefruit is gonna be like a yellowy orange with pink inside. A lemon will be yellow and yellow, and a lime will be green and green. Um, I'm gonna keep adding my little wedges here. Okay. And that's the fruit, and these spots in between are like the pith and other things like that, and then you can add your brighter color here. If it's a wedge, I'm gonna draw like a line and a triangle, but this triangle has a curve because it's gonna be part of this, like that, and then I'm giving it my U. And then the same thing, it's just got these wedges. So I'm gonna do a wedge, wedge inside little slices. For the outside of a lemon shape, think about like the shape of an eye or a football almost. So it comes down and it has these two little points or bumps on the end and then it will also go up. A lime is similar but they're usually just a tiny bit more round so maybe more like this. So a lemon is going to be a little flatter than a lime. Avocados are pretty quick and simple. They are similar to a pear shape but not as pronounced so it's got a smaller part and a bigger part. 
And if I'm drawing a whole avocado, this whole outside is gonna be like a dark brown, almost black or um, even a dark green, and they've got just little bumps all over, so you might draw some bumpies in. It's not a big pronounced bump, nothing like a, say, a pineapple, and they have a little spot at the top. If I'm doing a sliced avocado, it's the same thing, with a big circle seed inside, and they have, you can see, just a little bit of that outside, Edge, so that would be your dark brown color and then inside is going to be green like a bright yellowy green and then here's my brown seed which is like a medium brown um, kind of color if you want this to look more 3d because it would pop out at you you could add a shiny spot here and that'll help a little bit you could even add if you're doing um, you could add this as a shadow spot on the opposite side. 